salvage efforts are currently underway after a U.S. fighter jet shot the balloon down yesterday. You watched it right here live on television. The downing of the balloon ended a week-long saga uh, as it maneuvered across the country, possibly gathering data. Joining me now to talk more about this is my CNN colleague Fareed Zakaria. He is the host of Fareed Zakaria GPS. Good to see you, Fareed. So China is reprimanding, I and mean, no surprise here, but China is reprimanding or threatening the U.S. after the balloon takedown. So if relations between the U.S. and China were tenuous, what is it now? Well, I think what it shows is that uh, these kind of small crises can tr escalate out of control in a frankly very dangerous way. If we step back and ask ourselves, what was this crisis? How unprecedented was it uh, to have this event? Uh, was it some kind of an escalation? Well, look, we now know that there have been balloons like these that have passed across the United States in the past. Apparently, there was one last year. There were three during the Trump presidency. Nobody ever thought to do anything about it. Uh, so why this time? Well, perhaps because it could be seen by cameras, so it really is the optics of it. Uh, there's, there's, you know, the Chinese have about 600 military satellites uh, hovering around the, the world. They have photographed every square inch of the United States. There are other means by which you can get this stuff. Of course, the United States is the world's greatest, uh, uh, has the world's greatest intelligence capabilities. We spy on the Chinese all the time uh, using many, many different uh, mechanisms. So there seems something a little bit uh, irrational about suddenly uh, having this kind of paranoid attack about one uh, balloon that we happened to see when we did nothing about ones that, uh, that had passed through before. But and how do we know? I, I guess worry, no one really I, knows I, whether U.S. intelligence or U.S. military were able to discern what that balloon was doing. It's just publicly it hasn't been revealed, and they ascertained that it was a threat or it is a national security threat and thereby justifies the approach. We don't know all of that, but isn't that a possibility? Well, we, we don't know that. We don't know that, but we have a long history of uh, when these kind of things happen, uh, intelligence agencies and the government uh, inflate the threat, tell you that there's some kind of uh, vital uh, danger that there wasn't. I mean, you know, this is the, the same intelligence agencies told us Saddam Hussein had nuclear weapons. So one has to take that with a healthy dose of skepticism, given what I said, the facts, which is everybody who knows anything about this subject says you can get much more and much better images out using spy satellites. Uh, the, the, you know, the Chinese have sent these kind of balloons up in the past. Uh, there is, a, you know, there's a question of w w how are we reacting to what is the rise of a real competitor, peer competitor, um, and it feels somewhat like, some, to me, like a, 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 a reaction based on optics, domestic politics, uh, Biden administration worried about what the Republicans were saying. Mm. Uh, it doesn't feel serious. Uh, the mm. idea that the Secretary of State should postpone a visit to China for this. Look, so we're knowing not what meeting you know with the now, Chinese. Knowing what you know now in terms of the president even coming out yesterday saying he made this call on Wednesday, but then his military advisors say, wait till it's over water. Did that in any way? Because I know you did come out strongly on Friday saying it was a mistake to postpone the Secretary of State uh, Tony Blinken's uh, trip to uh, China. Knowing what you know now, given we don't know everything uh, about um, what was behind the president's decision or the timing of it. Do you believe that it would have been wise for the Secretary of State to be in China and the White House and Department of Defense knew that they were waiting for this balloon to be over U.S. waters, which they would calculate would be by the weekend? Would it be wise or detrimental for the Secretary of State to be in China while the takedown of its balloon was taking place? Look, the fundamental question is, are we talking to the Chinese as a gift to them, or are we talking to the Chinese to secure America's interests in the world, to secure a degree of predictability and, uh, and reliability between the relations of the two largest uh, economies in the world and a country that is a, a, a peer competitor? Mm -hmm. In my view, the reason we talk to the Chinese, the reason the United States has relations with other great powers, is because we are trying to secure America's interests. We are trying to stabilize a relationship that co could go out of control. Remember, the Chinese 
our nuclear power with intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, that's why we have uh, talked to the Soviet Union during the Cold War. That's why we talked to other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it feels to me like the whole uh, Im image here is that these visits are some kind of, uh, you know, a, a candy or, good, or, or gift that we are giving the Chinese to be withdrawn when there is some kind of, uh, you know, malfeasance on their part. Look, the Chinese are spying on us every day. We're spying on them every day. By the way, they have cyber me mechanisms at work. They're, all these are the reasons to talk to them. That, that we, we need to, I would like Tony Blinken to confront the Chinese about these very issues in person, draw lines, get agreements, uh, get some kind of uh, rules of the road set up. Mm. Uh, what have we gained by not talking to them? Well, it's a postponement. It, it still might happen though. Yeah, well, I hope it does, and I hope it, it, it happens quickly. There are mm -hmm. a lot of urgent issues that the United States needs to deal with China on. Yeah. You know, as I say, we're, we're in a new world. We're in a world where we have a great power uh, that is not dependent on the U.S. for security, like Japan or Germany, mm -hmm. powerful country, economically a competitor. We need to find a, a way to have an adult relationship with, this, with, with China. So earlier uh, today on State of the Union, Republican Senator Marco Rubio uh, said this brazen balloon incident was part of China's goal uh, of showing that it is a major power. Listen to his point of view. I think the broader relationship between the U.S. and China, to anyone who has any doubts about it, now the bottom line is, he is here. And that is, we are now, a, China has been for some time and will be the primary strategic adversary of the United States. And we should be focused on it because what they're trying to do is create a world in which they are the most powerful nation and the United States is a great power in decline. That, that, is, the, that is what they believe to be the case. That is what they are working on. And we have to determine whether we're going to allow the world to head in that direction or not. And Rubio, Senator Rubio, went on to say and criticize the Biden administration for their lack of transparency on the balloon. Uh, New Hampshire Republican Governor Chris Sununu calling it too little too late. Uh, the Republican chair of the House Select Committee on China, Congressman Mike Gallagher, said the response, and I'm quoting now, makes us look weak and flat-footed. So um, a whole lot of criticism, but um, does this not end up also potentially playing into the hands of the Chinese who perhaps wanted to sow divisions with all of this? No, what it really shows you more is that what happens when, you know, the nation goes into collective hysteria about something, uh, usually bad things happen. I remember just this kind of conversation around the time of the Iraq war and when people said, when people tried to point out that, you know, we didn't have evidence that there was actual uh, nuclear weapons, it was all uh, casted as you were being somehow, you know, being a traitor. Uh, I, I, look, I agree with what, what Senator Rubio is saying, that the, China is a, a powerful economic competitor, a geopolitical competitor, and the United States should try to make sure it is, remains the most powerful country in the world. The way to do that, by the way, is to invest in America, to invest in American jobs, precisely what the Biden administration is doing, to maintain strong alliances. Uh, or none of that requires this. And by the way, how come Marco Rubio didn't say anything when these balloons were flying over during the Trump administration? There seems something, you know, the whole thing seems very partisan and very political uh, on an issue on which, frankly, we should have the capacity to be somewhat bipartisan. Uh, th th this is just one more indication of how everything, even a balloon, has become an, a fodder for a kind mm -hmm. of crazy partisan warfare in Washington these days.